Good evening, sci-fi movie nerds, and welcome to another episode of the Sci-Fi Movie Guy. This is weekly show number 37, and we got a couple of great stories for you today. Um, let's start with Star Wars news, as we always do. And the big thing that hit the web, the interweb, whatever you want to call it, was Luke Skywalker's first words in The Last Jedi. And holy crap, this is a bunch of crap. Seriously. You know, I am getting sick and tired of shows out there taking every little piece of thing, um, and I'm not going to mention any names, but you guys know who you are, and you throw it out when you hear the slightest rumor about what Luke Skywalker's first words in the movie are going to be or anything, and then it travels amongst all of you, and they said his first words are going to be, who are you? Well, you know what? That's not how it came out. So Disney shareholders were in a meeting where they were showing everything that's going to come out in the next little while for Disney. And they showed a bunch of clips from Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. And one of the shareholders was tweeting constant tweets about what he saw in Star Wars The Last Jedi. And he said, oh, Luke's words, who are you? But you know what? That's not how it came out. If you look at the whole context, and I'm not going to talk about all of the tweets because there's a lot of spoiler stuff that I think is all going to be in the first trailer we get at Star Wars Celebration, but I am going to address what Luke says and when he says it and when he says, who are you? So according to what I'm hearing from the credible news sources, which would be make, or StarWarsNewsNet.com, uh, Collider Jedi Council, these guys know what they're talking about and they don't say anything unless they get confirmation. And they're saying, along with what I'm hearing, that this is later on in the movie and Luke is in a cave training ray and then he's asking her, who are you? As in, who are you inside? What kind of person are you? Who are you in context of him training her? Which makes way more sense. He's not going to, you know, she's not going to walk up on the mountain, hand him the lightsaber, and he looks over. Well, who are you? No. So, again, I am not a breaker of scoops. I don't break scoops on this show. I never have claimed to. I tell people stories and put it all into one tiny little place of sci-fi stuff that I think you'd be interested in watching. So that's the real story behind Luke Skywalker saying, who are you? So that's all I have to say about that. That's all we're really going to talk about with Star Wars news today. Now let's get into sci-fi news and I'm going to do a quick non-spoiler review of Kong Skull Island. Now, I am going to do a spoiler review, but hopefully it's going to be on Sunday where I got a couple of um, my friends coming over from TCE Movies. They have their own YouTube channel and they do some really cool stuff. Um, I'm not going to say more than that because hopefully they're going to be on the show on Sunday. We're going to talk about their show. We're going to show you one of their videos and then we're going to talk about Kong Skull Island and do a full spoilers review during that episode. Um, should be up Sunday night. Uh, hope you guys don't mind waiting for the spoilers review till then. Um, and that show is also going to air on their channel as well. So we're going to do the first ever simultaneous air um, co-show together. Um, but let's get into a Kong Skull Island non-spoilers review. So they've got some great actors that they brought in for this movie. John Goodman, Brie Larson, Tom Hiddleston. I mean, we got some great names in this movie. And... You all know if you've been watching my channel, I am not a huge just action movie with um, special effects, CGI, all that kind of stuff. It's got to have story, it's got to have character development, it's got to have plot, and it's got to have the right mixture of everything. That's why I liked Logan so much. Because, and you can watch my Logan spoiler, non spoiler review. Um, that's why I loved Logan so much, because it had everything that I love in a movie. Now, Kong Skull Island is very much just an action movie. All of these actors that they brought in, in my opinion, 
weren't utilized the way they should have been. Now, again, this is a non-spoilers review. Um, if you love action movies and you love CGI and you love King Kong, you're probably going to really like this movie. I thought it was okay. Um, I thought it was good. I didn't love this movie by any means. Um, I didn't think I would, though. I'm not a huge King Kong fan. I never have been. But I went to see it because, you know what? I like to see good movies and I want to be proved wrong. I wasn't proved wrong in this movie. Um, again, if you love action movies, you're going to love Kong Skull Island. But I thought all of the characters that were in it and all the actors that were in it weren't that well developed. The script had serious problems, in my opinion. Um, I think they threw it together knowing that they're going to get this big ape and he's going to have really cool action sequences like you see in the trailers where he knocks helicopters out of the air. And, you know, there's lots of fighting. And they're setting up another universe, which I'm not going to talk about here. I'll talk about it on Sunday in the spoilers review. Um, but, yeah, not my favorite movie. Um if you love action movies and you love that kind of thing, you're probably going to adore this movie and disagree with me. I'd love to know in the comments section below what you think about Kong Skull Island, but I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. That's the best that I could do for this movie. Um, I would say this is a movie that could definitely wait till it comes out on DVD to see unless you're huge into the action movies. Um, that's my review, non-spoiler review of Kong Skull Island. I'll get into more on Sunday. So now we get into our last story today, and it's our best story, I think, um, because we've got a lot of information coming out about Star Trek Discovery, the new Star Trek television series that is coming out in the fall. So let's get started on that. So the series will be about the Federation Starship Discovery. Although, unlike previous Star Trek shows, the main character will be a lieutenant commander and first officer, played by Sonequa Martin-Green, who is maybe best known for her role as Sasha Williams on AMC's The Walking Dead. There will also be another Federation vessel that will be a key part of the series, the starship Senzu. The series will be set in the prime Star Trek universe, the one from the various television series in the original 10 films, not the rebooted Abrams universe, which will remain separate and still continue on the big screen. The series will also be set 10 years before the original Star Trek series with Captain Kirk, roughly around the same time of the unaired Star Trek pilot, The Cage. The rest of the cast consists of Jason Isaacs as the commander of the Discovery, and his name is Captain Lorca, James Frain as Spock's father, Sarek, Anthony Rapp as a space fungus expert, Michelle Yeoh as the captain of the starship Shenzhou, and Doug Jones as Lieutenant Saru, a science offer that's part of the new alien species. Other cast members include Terry Ser Serpico as Admiral Anderson, a high-ranking official Starfleet uh, officer, Malik Pancoli, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing these names wrong, as Dr. Nambu, Chief Medical Officer of the Starship Senzu, and Sam Vartholomus as Ensign Connor, a junior officer in Starfleet, Starfleet Academy assigned to the Starship Senzu. As the series resident Klingons, the show has cast actors Chris Obi, Shazad Latif, and Mary Shifu. When will the show hit the airwaves, you ask? As After many delays, the series finally went into production in January of 2017 in Toronto, Canada. My home, Canada, not Toronto, but Canada. Originally, the series was announced as premiering in January of 2017, but the departure of Brian Fuller made the hit hitting that target impossible. The show is now scheduled to premiere in late summer or early fall of 2017. That premiere date is still very subject to change, though. The first season of Discovery is slated to have 13 episodes, which will drop all at once, as is typical for shows on streaming services. They will be aired first on CBS All Access, and then the next day on Netflix. So, I know I haven't talked a lot about Star Trek lately, and that's because I wanted to wait till we had some real concrete news, and we still don't have an exact release date for this show, but we have enough that I really wanted to talk to you guys about it again, because I am a huge Star Trek fan. I know lots of my shows are mostly on Star Wars and superhero movies, but I love Star Trek, um, and any chance I get to talk about Star Trek is amazing. Now... This show is really appealing to me, but I have a couple of concerns 
because of how slow Star Trek Enterprise started. So I was really getting into it by the end of it, and then they shut it down because there weren't enough viewers watching it by that time because they got so disenchanted with the first couple of seasons. Now, I really hope all you Star Trek fans out there will give this series a chance, because you know what? They all start off slowly. It's about character building, um, and that's the problem with, you know, sci-fi watchers these days. If it's not action-packed and, you know, everything, killing Klingons, clinging every, killing everything, then they just get bored. And you know what? We need to stop doing that and we need to start investing ourselves in these characters like we did when we were kids watching Star Trek Deep Space Nine and Star Trek The Next Generation. I mean, if you watch now Star Trek The Next Generation Season 1, it's awful. It is not good. But we learn to love these characters over time, and the stories get better, and the writing gets better, and when they get more money, because we're watching these shows, they get more money, and they can do better episodes. So, so all you Star Trek fans out there that really pretend to be true Star Trek fans, be a Star Trek fan and give this series some time and watch it. I want to thank everybody for watching the show today. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comments section below. I'd love to hear what you think about the stories we talked about today. Also, please do me a favor and like this video, subscribe to my channel. It really helps the viewership. And remember everybody, oh sorry, before we do that, I want to tell you, if you have any questions you want me to read them on the air, you can email me, movieguyscifi at gmail.com or follow me on Twitter, at movieguyscifi. And remember everybody, nerds rule the world.